And it is now a welcome to our Autumn Reflections, number three. Uh, Martin's going to host uh, number four next week. Uh, tonight's theme is, as you can see on the order of service, God is God in the beginning God. So we turn to the beginning of our order of service. We meet in the presence of God, the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Now again, I think this amazing church hasn't heard voices for a while. And there's a word in there that says shout. So I'm going to turn this way because I'm not officially allowed to shout towards you. So I'll turn this way and we'll repeat that one again. We meet in the presence of God, the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. I'm going to turn back again for the video. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. We say together our opening prayer. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. We now listen to our first hymn, How uh, Great Are You, Lord. Some Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. 
Again, we turn to our order of service and we begin, we're going to read alternate verses. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he, mighty king, lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in, a pill, in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You are a forgiving God to them but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. We say the collect for today together. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the understanding of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you father son and holy spirit one god now and forever amen again we remain seated as we listen to our next hymn holy 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 performed by tony merley and our virtual choir
Some words from scripture. Genesis 1. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered. The face of the deep while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. From John 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Our theme for this evening is God is God and with the strap line of in the beginning God. We now turn to some material that is based as it said in the book from the uh, from the in the order of service. There is a God in heaven. God is with you. God conceals himself. God reveals mysteries. The Lord is king. The people tremble. He has pity on the weak and poor. The high and lofty one who inhabits eternity inhabits the praises of Israel. The world and all that is in it belong to the Lord. The cattle on a thousand hills. Rich as he was, he made himself poor for your sake. God is ready to judge the living and the dead. Our God is a consuming fire. He will save his people from their sins. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. God remembers those who suffer. God is wise and powerful. Praise him forever and ever. There's three little questions that are in uh, my notes in front of me. And the questions are, who is God? Where is God? And what is God like? So to partially answer the first question, we turn to a German mystic named Gerhard Terstegen. And he wrote, a God understood a God comprehended is no God. After all the words and the theories, preachings and theologies, God is still incognito and beyond our comprehension. The next question, where is God? In heaven, in sacred places and religious celebrations, yes. But also within us, as the ground of our being, in the ordinary of life, and in the crisis and the variegated beauty of creation, in others and uniquely in Jesus of Nazareth, God was in Christ. We think about God in terms of transcendence, out thereness, and imminence, down here-ness. God is not merely far away, beyond the bright blue sky. He is closer than breathing, near, nearer than hands and feet. God is the life in everything. Justin Martyr says, he is present in all his works, though still unseen. But as creator, he is greater than the sum of all his creation. But somewhat the more important question, or the more urgent question, where is God when it hurts? And is God deaf? From biblical times, God's apparent ab absence or silence have puzzled and pained his people. In Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, God, we assume, does not come. Since Auschwitz, we wonder if we can still praise him. And today, in many parts of the world, his servants are ridiculed, tortured and killed. And the cries of the martyrs are still louder than those protesting the injustice done to those martyrs. The next question. 
What is God like? He cannot stop loving you. He thinks you are beautiful. He delights in you. So in the joy and the comfort of this total acceptance, make room for a surprise and hope and wonder at the unexpected, unexpected and above all certainty that you are loved forever. And never forget, as another old mystic said, if you have God and everything else, you have no more than having God only. And if you have everything else and not God, you have nothing. You are looking for something along with God and you are behaving exactly as if you were making of God like a candle so that you could not look for something. But when you find something with the candle, you then throw the candle away. The God of the gospel is God, who again and again discloses, discloses himself in you and must be discovered in you. The God of the gospel is no lonely God, self-sufficient and self-contained. He is our God. He exists neither next to us nor merely above us, but rather with us, by us, and most importantly of all, for us. The content of God's word is free, undeserved, most definitely undeserved. Yet to the whole human race, in spite of human unreasonableness and corruption, he is still with us. There's a bumper sticker that I saw on the internet saying, let God be God. And it states the most imperative of life. What could be more important really than letting one's God be their true God? Letting the one who is God by nature function as one's God in fact. Every day of our lives, God who made us does battle with the gods that we have made. Only a creator can fully, fully satisfy and genuinely fulfill our every need. The self-love is not the self God loves. The neighbors we do not prize are his treasures. The truth we ignore is the truth he maintains. The justice we seek because it is not our own is not the justice that his love desires. The righteousness he demands and gives is not our righteousness, but greater and different. There is only one def good definition of God, the freedom that allows other freedoms to exist. I repeat, there is only one good definition of God, the freedom that allows other freedoms to exist. Just like to close this little section of thoughts about God with a prayer from Saint Augustine of Hippo. Lord God, creator, saviour and friend, I see glimpses of your creative beauty in the stars, in the mountains, in the trees and birds and flowers. The sun sings your praises, the moon gives you glory. The oceans, storms and thunder join the mighty chorus to extol your majesty. You are the one whom I live and move and have my being. You are not a remote, unfeeling deity, but amazingly, you are deeply concerned about all my ways. I, even I, can experience your healing presence in my valleys. 
my lonely nights and my grievings, in my waywardness when I am inclined to self-destruct, your grace covers a multitude of sins. Your will is my peace. To obey you is perfect freedom. Your energizing power gives life, purpose and meaning. And the promise of your near nearness offers renewing hope. Thank you for your gifts of fresh new mornings, work and play and laughter and cheerfulness, rest and sleep. Above all, thank you for your word to guide me, strength to love, the fellowship of your people and the sure promise of eternal life. Lord, may I give you the same place in my heart that you have in the universe. Eternal God, the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This God, God is God in the beginning God. We can never describe God. We can never, if we could describe God, we'd know more than God and we can never know more than God. Scripture says, my ways are not your ways. My understanding is far before you, far above your understanding. We can't describe him. All we can do is fall down in praise and adoration of everything that he's done. We now move to a time of reflection. Uh, like previous uh, times, some music will be played. There's a little service sheet to fill in there. Some questions just to, if, if there are any help to guide you, then please use them. If not, then if you're willing to write a prayer, and then will anybody who's willing after the period of time of reflection, again, as before, you can step up to the microphone and share your thoughts or prayers or anything that struck you with this evening. So we just move to a time of reflection. We just move to a time of uh, prayer or feedback. Any thoughts what anybody's had? Anything that's been generated from the questions or just anything anybody wants to say? Please feel free to come up and just share with us. Right, these words uh, just came into my head, and this is what I've just been writing. And I've written, Divine Spirit, Father God, you gave us the commandments, trusting that we would follow these. When Adam and Eve each took a bite of the apple, you gave man free will. You hear, God, why are you doing this? Why are you allowing these catastrophes? 
man needs to look and realize that man alone is the cause through greed for power and wealth. We, as your faithful children, need to raise our voices, see if those who are misguided realize your love for us is true and just. May we spread the words of the commandments. Thank you. Um, the first thing we were asked to reflect on was um, expressions of God, of who God is, um, that have spoken to us during the last few months. Um, for me, during the last few months, there's been a really consistent awareness of God's presence in the everyday. I think that was mentioned earlier on this evening. Um, that we've all faced so many challenges and uncertainties. At times, it's, we've, I think people have been fearful. We haven't been able to do the things that mean so much to us, um, like singing. Um, we miss that. Like spending time with family, like giving each other a hug when we see each other. There's a lot of things that have made us feel really uncertain and unstable um, and unsure of what the future is really. Um, and yet here we all are, we're all meeting together and we're all worshiping to God together in a new way. There's some of us in the building, there's some of us on the internet. Who would have believed a year ago that we would be worshiping God together across the internet? I think it's incredible how much we've achieved and how much God has been with us in all of that. Um, it's just remarkable. Um, as God's people, we've been flexible, we've adapted, and we've stuck together and supported each other. And I think that's been great. Um, and underneath all of that, God has been our rock. Um, just an absolute foundation. And we know that this is our God in whom we can trust. Um, and I've drawn a picture, I've drawn a picture in recognition of Sue's birthday, of a birthday cake. Um, because I've actually, it isn't really Sue, it's Sue in a good few years time, and all of us in a good few years time, I put the number 100 on it, so I reckon we could all aim to live to be 100, couldn't we? Um, and my belief is that when each of us reach that birthday, God will still be with us, and that trust will still be there. So I think my message for the church is keep on trusting. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about that first question about who God is. And oh, we'll see what else I'll move on to, but <laughs> who knows? Everlasting was, everlasting was the word that came to me from the beginning of time to the second coming and beyond. And I put a sort of, you know, the next line was what COVID seems such a big thing at the moment. But you know, in the scheme of things, how significant will it be in the future when we look back? It'll be significant for us, but God's going to be with us always, and he's going to take us into heaven with him in a sort of everlasting picture. Um, and it kind of, Rachel, by what Rachel said, persuaded me to come up, because the second question there, I one of the things I put, God would say to us, trust me for the big picture. You'll be with me in heaven. And then as we listen to God, please note any thoughts or feelings which you have relating to our two churches. Well, what I've written down here is what God might be saying to us in light of that big picture is what is really important to me, God is asking us, about your parishes and about the people who live within them. And that was a question um, and no answer. But. <laughs> 
you can guess. Oh, I don't know. You can you can think. You can guess what I'm thinking, but that's not right. That's not the right answer. The right answer is what does that mean for you and for us? I'm sure many people through the last few months have been asking the question, where is God in all this? And I just feel that God is the one who housed the homeless, fed the needy, brought communities together. God made us aware of how much we need the hospitals and the staff, the police, and God brought us together in love. Thank you for those who've uh, come up and shared their thoughts and their prayers. Uh, while I was reflecting on this earlier on today, a passage, well, it's not a passage, a video that was on YouTube that I heard. Has anybody heard the video by a pastor called Lockridge, called That's My King? I'd encourage you, Rachel's waving at the background, I'd encourage you to, to look it up. This pastor, is, there's a video of it, but he, he, it was an actual gathering that he preached at. And he stepped up and he started to try and explain and describe God. And he, he speaks for five minutes talking about who God is. And, and then towards the end of it, he says, I wish I could describe him, but he's undescribable. And then continues and continues and continues. So it's a really upbeat and... That's my king. It's. Can you, can you just give us the name of the person? It's. I think it's something Lockeridge. Locker S S Lockeridge. If you type, if you type, that's my king, into into YouTube. It's. It's inspirational. It's it's really really good. I'd recommend it. I think the the only feedback I would give is, is God is love, and. The, I keep on repeating the love I've, the love Karen and I have received since coming here, the love I feel in these churches. God is up to something. God is in COVID. God is God is everywhere, and as somebody said, trust. It is trust in Him. As we, the music that was playing through the reflection, I will trust in You alone. But God is up to something. We just have to trust and walk with him every day. We listen to our final hymn, uh, In Christ Alone, performed by John Wyatt. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest dry and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I'll stay. Of love in righteousness, 
prayer by, or not a prayer, but of, uh, a poem by David Adam. You are the peace of all things calm. You are the place to hide from harm. You are the light that shines in dark. You are the heart's eternal spark. You are the door that's open wide. You are the guest that waits inside. You are the stranger at the door. You are the calling of the poor. You are my Lord and with me still. You are my love, keep me from ill. You are the light, the truth, the way. You are my saviour this very day. And the closing prayer. Jesus, Lord of time, Hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God. Travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners. Heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow. Draw us into your future. Amen. And we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.